Tonight we have the disturbing results of a year-long investigation into people hired to protect who end up killing. You see them everywhere, private armed security guards at banks, at malls, public facilities. No one really keeps track how many of them have guns, although the number is increasing in recent years. Well, now an investigation by CNN and the Center for Investigative Reporting finds a troubling pattern, uneven training and standards for background checks, leading in many cases to some deadly consequences. We're talking about armed guards with mental issues, others who were prohibited from having a weapon but managed to beat the system to become one of this country's hired guns. Our investiga senior investigative correspondent Drew Griffin tonight has the story. Kiwan Bird was gunned down in the parking lot of a Miami strip club in June of 2012. He was unarmed, sitting in a pickup truck, when he was shot and killed by an armed security guard. This is that guard being brought into court, now charged with murder, and facing a father who can't understand why his son has been taken away from him. You, you don't murder my son, man, for nothing? When he was trying to get away from you, you, was the, you he was trying to get away from you, man. And you kept shooting him while his back was under the truck. And you kept shooting him, man. You kept shooting him. And his back, his back was tied to you, man. Lucas Shane Kendall has a history of alcohol abuse, a DUI conviction. He was kicked out of the Navy. After the shooting, the jail psychiatrist diagnosed him with antisocial personality disorder and a recent diagnosis by court-ordered psychiatrists of unspecified schizophrenia spectrum and other psychotic disorder. Yet on the day Donald Byrd's son was shot and killed, Lucas Kendall was fully licensed by the state of Florida to hold a badge and a gun. When you got a little young security guard, young cash security guard, hell, they can get any kind of opportunity to use their weapon. It's death. You know, it's, it's, it's death. Details of the shooting, as chilling as the moment Donald Byrd met his son's killer in court. Kendall arrived on duty early, seen here in this surveillance video on that June night. Kiwan Bird and his friend Michael Smathers were already sitting in a pickup truck in the parking lot. Kendall told police he thought they were rolling marijuana. He approached the truck and claims Bird and Smathers were looking menacing. One of the men threatened him, he says, and both car doors opened. Kendall claims he felt his life was in danger and believed one of the men had a weapon. He fires at least 12 shots, hitting Bird eight times including four shots in the back as Bird crawled under the truck. The shooting left Bird dead and Michael Smathers paralyzed. Police say no gun, no weapon was found in that truck. Kendall calmly called 911. How are you doing? Oh, was a shooting at a uh, club Rolex. Was anyone shot? Yeah, two people were shot. Where's the gunman now? I am the gunman. I'm a security officer. <laughs> They threatened to shoot me and they started reaching down, so I'm going to kill you. Security guards, even though many may look like police officers, by and large don't have arrest powers and don't report to the public. An investigation by CNN and the Center for Investigative Reporting finds the armed security guard industry is kind of like the Wild West when it comes to oversight. You can become an armed guard in 15 states with no firearms training. Nine states don't bother to run an FBI criminal background check. 27 states don't even check to see if someone is banned by federal law from carrying a gun. Unlike police officers, the requirements to become a licensed armed guard across the U.S. can be so lax. In Kentucky, you can become an armed guard simply by arming yourself and calling yourself one. There's no training requirement. There's no licensing requirement. A security company simply needs a business license, just like the florist down the street has. But instead of selling flowers, they're selling guard service. Security industry veterans Pat Alexander and Steve Caballero run a security guard training school. They blame security firms more interested in making money than paying for proper training. They need warm bodies, to put on the street to make money by the hour. They don't want to have to go through all of the training procedures to wait to get that body out there. Only four states require security guards to pass a psychological evaluation. Florida is not one of them. Kiwan Bird's mother, Arlene, 
surrounded by his father and sister, believes Florida granted an armed security guard license to a man who was crazy. He feels justified in saying that he was defending himself. He's sick. Kendall could have been disqualified from becoming an armed guard for getting discharged from the Navy after several alcohol-related offenses, but he didn't disclose that on his application, and the state issued him a license. So who did hire Lucas Kendall? This man, Belgrave Ariano, is the owner of the now-defunct security company that hired him. Hi, Belgrave. Drew Griffin with CNN. How you doing? Hi, Drew. How you hey, doing? Good. How are you? I'd like to talk... Why did you hire uh, Lucas? Did you do any screening of him? Excuse me, we're, you hired we're leaving right now. It's nice to meet you, though. Have a great day. Thank you. The Kiwan bird killing isn't the only case involving one of Ariano's armed guards. His former business is fighting a lawsuit in connection with another fatal shooting by one of its security guards. Two other lawsuits alleging that his guards were negligent have been settled. Ariano's attorney says Lucas Kendall had all the required training and background checks when he was hired. But in Florida, that's not much. Security guards are required to attend one week of training and three and a half more days to carry a gun. Kendall told police it was self-defense and told the court he didn't want a lawyer. How is it that you expect to represent yourself? I'm not going to represent myself. I refuse to participate in the charade. I, will I would advise you to do things the easy way. You wanted a trial. I don't want a trial. This is a charade. Okay. Kendall has been ruled incompetent to stand trial. Kendall's mother, Chris, claims her son had no mental issues prior to the shooting. My son is the victim in this whole thing. He's been attacked in jail several times, beaten ribs broken, his head has stitches on his face. They had to put him in isolation for longer than 15 months, isolation. Nobody stays normal in isolation at that amount of time. It has been two and a half years since Arlene Bird's son was killed. The family is still waiting for a trial. My son was crawling underneath the truck trying to get away and he stood there and continued to shoot, but yet and still, he felt for his life. How? How? It's an incredible story, and Drew Griffin joins me now. It seems like this could happen again. You know, there are a million armed and unarmed guards in this country. A million. A million. That is nearly double the amount of police officers we have, yet no national standards, no national requirement for an FBI background check, in many of these states, the licensing agency, when there is an armed guard shooting, they don't even bother to investigate it. So Lucas Kendall could get a license, uh, somebody like Lucas Kendall could get a license today, absolutely. Th there's a second part to this report that we're going to air tomorrow night. What is... What we're going to look at a state where the oversight is so poor that they had a guy who was actually barred from possessing a gun granted a license at the same time wow. with disastrous consequences. All right, that'll be on tomorrow night on 360, Drew. Incredible. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. If you have a comment on this story and an idea for the investigative unit, we want to hear from you. Go to CNN.com slash investigation.